Hey guys and gals, Chartreuse here, bringing you some more Minecraft Redstone today. Today we are in the latest snapshot, 13W09C, and we are playing around with Redstone and Command Blocks, specifically Command Blocks and the Scoreboard Command. Now, what we have here first is an uh, analog signal, in this case a sawtooth way of making with these uh, comparators, and we are turning it into, uh, hard to show you, but over here, if you look, uh, it's we're turning it into. Mem uh, we're showing it on the scoreboard, and we're using it. We're going to be using it later uh, to take the value back out. But what this is useful for is, say, you have a signal in an uh, analog somewhere, and you want to transmit that across the map. Now, I forgot to make for this video a proper decoder for the analog but I can get it back as binary and uh, so how does this work uh, so along this thing we have a bunch of decoders and what these little these two piece encoders here like this are detecting is whether this blocks on but this next block here is not which would mean it had to be the signal because we're essentially detecting the top edge let's see if we can catch it as it comes along here so like you can see the top edge of the signal here, that's the strength of our signal. So when we find our strength of our signal, uh, we use using a, what is it? I guess it's an implies gate technically. But yeah, yeah it's, it impl implies, I guess it's properly called. And we send this, when it happens, we send a signal into each of these scoreboards and we, uh, we've already created this uh, memory as a dummy type and I've set the score on the right for clarity. Uh, just for purpose sake, we're saying it to all, all players, even though it's only me. It's the easiest way of doing it. And we set this one to one because this is this one here comes on when the signal strength is one. Uh, this one here turns on when there's no signal, so signal strength zero. As such, then like this side's all odd numbers because we have to stagger this both sides. So what one, three. Five, so on, and the side zero, two, four, six, and so on down the line. Uh, ending on this side with this very simple one. Whenever the signal's far at the end, we don't have to bother checking the next one. Uh, check that that's fifteen. And this thing here is just a count. I think analog. It counts down in analog. It's got two here and one there, so it's slowly losing one over each cycle. Five comparators, takes a while to go down. So now I'll just demonstrate without that, that it works on any value. So we see no signal, no value. Uh, let's put one here at 15. Uh, let's put in here, now here another one here at signal strength uh, 10. Five, four, three, two, and one. Uh, I'm sure this could be quite useful to someone. Uh, I thought it was fun making it wasn't too hard. Basically, when you're making these command blocks, and I can't descend for some reason, there we go. Uh, when you're making these command blocks, just uh, cop copy it and just edit the value every time you paste the paste, change the last number. Simple because it's nice on the end there. Uh, now I'm going to uh, take the torch off here, and so these aren't messing with our results for the next thing I'm going to show you. Uh, this one didn't turn out as uh, neat as this one because I do have to set because of the set zero, but this is a, a binary counter. It's exactly do you could implement this with this as well, but uh, you, essentially we can. It doesn't have to be a counter. It's just this part here is how you turn a normal signal into uh, a memory, a signal stored in the scoreboard memory. Now. One thing to note is uh, this is stored in one the same one called memory. Uh, what you can do is you can create a bunch of these if you want to use these as like registers or to store data while you're running. And you can take those numbers out later. But first we're going to do this. So we take we have an inverted version of our signal here. This is, this is inverted. We hold it off with until we get a pulse and then we send it to the command blocks because the command blocks only work on the rising edge of a signal. And let's start it running. Start it up here. Uh, my little 
Double torch trick. Block. As you can see, it does flicker zero while counting. Now, I could move to try mess around with timings, but I'm trying to get less than a tick, but it's not really worth it. So what we do here is one tick before we set these. We have two ticks delayed between the other flag comes on and off. Is we set the score to zero and we add the numbers in here because we can from a number we have to add the one part the two part the four part and the eight part from binary we can't just set it to a known val value like we can with the analog so we use adding and so we add them all at once and we get our number so two four you see the binary numbers here and the representation over there now this could also be used as just a simple output for say a redstone computer or something. Instead of making a big set of segment, you just use the scoreboard as your output. And as long as you're not counting too fast like counting fast like this, you the quick flash to zero won't be that noticeable. If you're using it for display, it'll be just fine. Like oh, yeah. So now it's at one. And you wouldn't notice that as a display that quick flash where that thing turned. So it's not too bad. Now the fun part. We've got our encoders. Now we want a decoder. Um, that's my first version over there. Uh, ignore it because it's based on timing. This one I specifically made to avoid all the timing issues that that one had. Here we can see that one's stuck with those two lines on. That's a timing issue, so that one's broken. But uh, let's uh, reset our memory here. Let's just use just simple command blocks saying score that one to four. <laughs> I didn't know that. If you power this block, it's powering that one. If you power that one, it powers this one. That's funny. I didn't realize that when I made those. Okay, so right now we have it set to zero, so we're just gonna hit this, we're just gonna clear it, and we're not gonna look at it so you don't get you don't get a peek. Okay, so now we have our output at all zeros. Now for value purposes, let's uh, store our fourteen in there. So we have 14 there, so which means we want to get 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 as our output. So 8 plus 4 plus 2 is 14. So now, what this machine here is going to do is it's going to, it needs to be based somewhat on timing like this. You have to go top to bottom. So this first command book here is a test 4. So we're checking. So test 4 will output a redstone signal if this test case is true. So we are going to check if the nearest player could... It's easier than checking all players and it makes more sense for the test cases. So check the nearest player has a score from the scoreboard, memory, the value memory, which is at least 8. So if our number is at least 8, there's no way in binary it couldn't contain an 8. So... What we do when we get that, it outputs our redstone signal through the comparator here, is we subtract 8 off from memory. So now when we subtract 8 off from memory, um, it also goes up here for later. Because this thing, wh when you run a test for it, does as soon as it's not continuously checking, it only checks when it receives a redstone on the on uh, rising edge of a redstone signal. And it'll continue outputting until it's done. So. While that's outputting, we're holding this torch off to indicate that we took an 8 out. And because we're testing 14, this should happen. We should take an 8 out. This torch should sit here. And uh, just wait for now. It wants to turn off this torch, but it can't yet. Turn on this torch, but it can't. So these just stay on, but then, because this thing, this will take two ticks here to remove it. We have to have two ticks between. We can't do one tick because the subtractor is not fast. This isn't fast enough to handle it. So two ticks later, we check the next one. We check for four, because after we take out eight, if the number is four or greater, it has to contain a four. And we do the same thing. We subtract over here. And if we do subtract, like we should, we'll turn off this torch and get ready up here. Next, For the next one, we do two, because if we subtracted eight or four, or an even, and if, there was, if the number is greater than two, but was less than four, or if the number now is greater than 2, but less than... Yeah, great. if the number 2 is still greater than 2, there must be a 2 in it. So we take out a 2, continue on, turn the torch out, which we will. Now we'll check if the number is greater than 1, which it won't be in this case. So we won't turn, take away 1, and the torch will stay on. And now when we get to the end here, uh, what we're going to do, first of all, 
there's needs to be a slight timing difference between these two, and they need to be fairly. This one needs to be fairly long, for the because the they still haven't fixed those torches yet, so they still eat short pulses. So we have to make. I they extend this out to three ticks, and the bottom one needs to be what uh, two ticks longer than that, because of the two ticks from torch to torch to command block. So that this thing, the bottom part is it's firing. I believe. Well, it's about the same. Yeah, but so what this bottom one down here is doing is it is triggering all these test four blocks again. So it's going to be powering all these blocks here. This is kind of this one's redundant, but it's for and these will all turn off because after we've done gone through all these t test four and subtracts, we should we will be left with zero in our memory. So because we want to reset these test fours, this is a perfect opportunity to run the test fours again and get this all cleared. Now, after we run that, we have uh, two ticks. For these are going to start turning off. So at the top here, we are going to turn on use these and the and gate we set up here with these torches. And we are going to enable these all at the same same time after the command blocks being reset because we have one tick extra delay going to these. And what they're going to do is if we took away a one from here, which we didn't, so that won't happen, but two, four, and eight, we will take away. It will add those back so we don't uh, get rid of our memory. It stays clean. So remember that we are expecting one, 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 zero from this 14. And we, oh, I forgot to show one more part here. We're uh, using this command block in this redstone as a bud switch for the output latch. You could use non bud output latches if you wish. I just chose to do this for compactness and simplicity. So we run down here and update the pistons in sequence with the delays of that. It'll be two, two ticks off that. So we have two ticks and then that updates, two ticks that updates, two ticks that updates, and two ticks that updates. And we latch these all in sequence. And making sure not to let's accidentally latch these again when we reset set it. So we're going to watch this go. And you see, done. For four bits, it's really quick. It's just a few ticks. Well, eight ticks, but it feels pretty instant. And you see over here, our memory is still at 14, and we got our 1110 outputted. If you run that again, if you look over at the memory on the right, you see it counts down to zero and then resets itself. That, that's expected behavior, so you don't want to be have multiple things accessing the same memory and doing the destructive uh, reading at the same time. Like if I. I uh, don't know if I'll be able to do this right, but we'll. Yeah, I didn't do it right. So it's like pulses through. You see, I've corrupted it down to two. And I don't think... Oh, no, it's, it survived this time. Sometimes it corrupts these, but I guess my pulses were too quick. But you can see that it corrupted the value down to two now. And if you want to prove this still works, you got two. You got a two out. So now we're just going to reset. 14. 14 and we will check again and that gives us 14 so this thing could actually even run while something is counting up or down uh, let's run the countdown because it look it's a lot cleaner it doesn't have that silly flashy I haven't had an issue with the flashing with the decoder but you see our countdown here running down actually that might be a little too fast for this to handle but we get to see the first time uh, hooking it up to that instead of the binary counter. So we're going to run it at... No. I ran it at 10, but it got 9, so it didn't corrupt. It got about the right spot because there's a slight delay in this. We're going to try again around... I'm going to click it at 10 again when it comes around and see if we can get 9 again or if it's bit off, but... Yep, we got 9 again, so it's not corrupting there. Let's try another number just to show that's not a fluke. We'll wait for... Uh, Six, so we should get five. Uh, well, we got seven there. Four plus two plus six, one. So must have hit that a little early, or yeah, this is a bit too fast. Let's put it on the binary counter because it could be just corrupting and as it's counting down and merging two numbers. Because because this thing takes eight ticks, that thing's running at five ticks. Or this thing is running at a reasonable eight, reasonable delay as well. Huh, that's an odd visual glitch there. 
Yeah. It's just a distance thing. Piercing the lock state when you're far enough away from them. Interesting. So this one's counting up now, so we're let's go grab a number that's not too small. Let's grab five. Actually, you might grab six there. Oh, we got. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you see, I must when we when the numbers were quickly changing, we managed to corrupt this. So these uh, test fours are now stuck. That happens when either the data is changing too. Qu I don't. No, it shouldn't happen when the data is changing too quickly. We must have got a double pulse somehow through the system. Uh, so what, ha what happens when you get that? Uh, we need to stop our counter for a second. And we're gonna reset it. And run it through again. And that should clear these all out. Yep, you see those are all fixed. And we can try again. So that was a corruption of running it too fast or two blocks. I not, didn't see which one happened. So let's try this again. We're going to wait for five. So you either get six or just five. Well, I pressed a little late, so but we still got five here. We got five through. I haven't had an issue with this going to see zero and I'm guessing that zero is also helping as a buffer for corruption. There's our six. Let's get 13. Now oh, we got 12. 842. So as you can see it's pretty reli pretty reliable for the most part. I say that when it uh, borked up I must have a timing issue in here. <laughs> oh great. It's working just fine before the demo I assure you. It's a curse of the demo. Something will always go wrong when you try and show it off. So we reset it. And uh, let's play with 14 again because it's... Play with 14 again. <laughs> and that worked. So it could have been something changing, but that really shouldn't affect it. So let's uh, run this a few times, see if we... Okay, so we managed to do it. So the issue is running this button too fast. I must have pressed it twice in succession. Because So if you want this to be a uh, safer step, you'd set up an interlock down here. So after this button's pressed, you have an RS Norlat, so you can't press it again until you get to one tick after th this signal, or, or two ticks after this signal, or a tick after this signal. Have an S RS Norlat here, stopping you from pressing it again. Or just be careful with your timing circuits. So, you see, I uh, managed to add 28 into there to do that. Oop, not fun. So, the solution when you get an error is to clear it at zero, which should be happening with these bottom ones. But if you have a double pulse in before it gets to clear it, you start setting the values again while you're erasing them, so you never get to really erase them, so everything gets corrupted. So, I hope you enjoyed this quick, uh, well, not so quick uh, video on. Uh, using scoreboards for storage, either analog, either analog or digital, Just either storing it or taking the value out into binary. So hope someone finds this useful and maybe use it in some of their inventions in here. Anyways, this has been Chartreuse K, and have a nice day.